Hello, my fellow gnomes. In today's episode, I'm going to show how we can generate some land and sort of terrain, environment stuff around us as we travel. So we're not just got a boring base plate that we can sort of leave behind anymore. But we have something dynamic that's generating a head of us and creates a pretty immersive uh, world for ourselves. So let's jump into it. So first off, let's make our base plate uh, look a little bit more interesting. Um, so let's get rid of this texture and instead let's make it a uh, sandy and give it a sort of deserty color much better. And now let's go add in a folder for ourselves. We're going to call this land and oh, we've got the capitals on land and we'll drag our base plate in. Now we could generate um, a whole base plate ahead of ourselves, but just so we can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better. Instead of making it uh, 2,000 studs, I'm just going to make it 128 studs. So it's much smaller. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this base plate and generate a new one in front of ourselves each time as the train travels along. So we're going to line these up sort of roughly with our train track. So in order to do this, we're going to need a new module script inside of our train handler. I'm actually going to place it inside of the track, seems it's sort of to do with that. And we'll call this environment and we'll rename the module accordingly. And just like with our tracks, um, we're going to keep record of what we've generated. So land generated is going to be a blank table. Well, actually, it's not going to be entirely blank because the first element in it is going to be workspace.land.baseplate. And then we're going to create a function, function environment dot add next. And this is going to be called from the track dot add next. So once we've done all this stuff with the track, well, we're going to use that new piece to inform whether we need to add another base, base plate. Um, so let's make sure we're actually calling um, our module from inside of here as well. So environment is equal to require script dot environment and now we have that we can say environment dot add next fix that typo there we go so that next piece that we've just generated we're going to send to it and also just to keep track of what number we're currently on i'm going to send the the total number of existing tracks as well now, whether we want to add in a new piece of land or not will depend on how big our base plate is. So let's check the current land, which is just the land generated and the last element of it. So initially, that's just going to be our base plate that we've already made. And then we want to check if the position of the next piece the player is adding, track piece, if the primary part dot position dot z if that's further forward than the current land dot position dot z then so in other words we're more than halfway across this so if i had this blue part it's not and then as soon as it crosses this line the position dot z of this part is further forward than the position dot z of the base plate. So when the train reaches this far forward, we want to generate the next piece of land. So local new land is just going to be a copy of our current land. So current land clone will assign it a C frame, which is going to be the same as the previous one. And then we just want to offset it by its size on the Z axis. And then I'll give it a name too. So rather than just all being called base plate, let's have base plate and then maybe the current number. So I was setting the amount of tracks that we had. So let's do that. Let's make it equal to, so if we have track number here, we can say is equal to base plate track number plus one again. We'll add this new land into the workspace.land folder. And then finally, we'll add it into our land generated table. There we go. So let's go into our train now. And you can see we've actually already generated the next piece of land because we have that buffer all set up. So we've generated three pieces of track and that has resulted in um, these three pieces of base plate. Although the numbers are three and four. Hang on, that's not quite right, is it? I think what I meant to put uh, instead of hashtag track number, instead of track number, we want 
hashtag land generated plus one. So now if we click play, I think the uh, the numbers should be right. The numbers don't matter, but it's nice to have them all numbered, isn't it? So if we get in our train and start moving forwards, we should see the next track gets generated and the next piece of land. So we now two, three, and four, and we'll keep going forward. Now the 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 tracks are going to get uh, despawned. They're going to get cleaned up behind us, but we're not removing the land. So let's add a bit of cleanup for that. So just below, let's add a new function. Invite. Hang on a minute. I've spelt it right here, but not here. Oh dear, what a mess. I'm struggling with this word today. <laughs> Environment. Right, let's correct all of these so we're not going to need weird spellings. Let's check if we want to remove it. So we're just going to loop through all of our current land in land generated. And we can check if, well, if we have land and that land has a parent, so it's not already been removed, and the position dot Z. So just as we were checking the position there, we're kind of going to do the opposite. If it's less than a certain Z position that we're going to supply to this function, if it is, then we can just go ahead and destroy it. Land destroy. And we're not going to remove it from our table just so that we can keep a record of how many pieces we've actually generated for our iterator there. So now we've got this function. Let's call it from our track function. We've got the track.generate just here. We are removing the track. But just before that, we want to remove old environment. So let's call our environment.cleanup function and we'll send it for the Z position the old track that we're removing. Old track dot primary part dot position dot Z. And now when I'm playing the game, it should generate a head of me. But then as soon as we leave that buffer behind us, the land's going to get destroyed too. And all those things on it will go flying. And we'll see it again. There we go. So that's fully working now. We have our land and then this will just uh, keep generating for as long as we're generating tracks. But maybe it would be nice to have some kind of environment because this is all just a, a bit blank really, isn't it? just endless, empty desert. The desert's not interesting enough. So you can add whatever you like, but I've got this rock and this cactus that I want to add in. Now, I've just added a little invisible box around each of these um, that I want to line up so that this box, let's make it uh, semi-transparent so you can see it. And I'm going to use this box. It sort of sets a bounding box and allows me to use it as the primary part of the rock and the same thing with the cactus opening. So we'll set that to fully transparent for both of these. And then I'm going to go into server storage, add in a new folder called assets. And then I might want more assets later on in the game. So we'll have a subfolder called uh, decoration. And we'll drag both the cactus and the rock into the decoration folder. Now, I think with the decoration, we're going to directly offset it from our track piece. So in our environment script, and I've just noticed I have butchered the uh, the name here as well. Let's fix that. Dreadful spelling for me. Environment. There we go. OK, we've got that name correctly. Let's just make sure I've named it in the... Uh, there we go. Rename it in there too. That's now fixed. Back to scripting spelling be complete. Uh, so in our add next, we do land. And now we want to do decoration stuff. So I'm going to add in a new folder. And we'll name the folder environment. Let's make sure we spell it right. Underscore dot dot and the corresponding track number. And then the folder dot parent. Because um, we're probably going to have a few of these. Let's add a new top level folder called environment. I'm making really sure that I spell these correctly now. And we can paste it into there. So workspace dot environment. And then let's say we wanted to spawn in um, five different cactuses or cacti. So we'll loop through five times. So we want to be to the side of the track. So let's get an X offset in the X direction. So we'll use the track piece, get its primary part and the size of that dot X. So how wide it is. And then we're going to add a, a random value somewhere between 15 
and the size of the land. Current land dot size. Um, well, half of it, I suppose. Or we might not even want to go all the way out. So we could just do like a third of it. So we're not going to be generating stuff at the very edge. I'll zoom out a bit so we can see that whole line. And then we're going to have a Z offset. So this is how far forwards it is. And this can be just any old number, really. So let's generate a random number somewhere between uh, minus 50 and 50. Um, seen as my track is 100 pieces long, that will give me plenty of room to work with. So now we know that the position is equal to the position of the track plus a new vector 3, which is comprised of our X offset. We don't have any Y offset, but we do have a Z offset. So now all that's left to do is to copy one of these models and place it into this environment folder that we're creating. I'm actually going to create a new function for this at the very top. Spawn track decoration, which will take the name, the position and what we want to parent it to. So first off, let's try and find the asset from uh, game dot server storage or we should probably whenever you're using services it's a good idea to create a top level one so game get service server storage and then you can refer to it like so dot the assets and we'll try and find anything with the name um, if there is not an asset then something's gone wrong so let's just warn no such asset and the name probably just because you had a typo or something if you're getting this flag up in your output and return out of here but otherwise assuming that we've found it then we can just make a copy of it and we might even want to position these at a random angle as well so the angle can be equal to cframe dot angles and we're just going to randomly rotate it on the y-axis of a random number somewhere between 0 and 360 degrees and 0 on the z and we also do need to calculate a Y offset. I didn't do it um, before, um, but now we know the exact size. Or we know what asset we have, and then we can do it based off the size of that asset. So C frame dot new zero, and then it's going to be the asset dot primary part dot size dot Y divided by two. And then obviously zero on the Z. So the final C frame is going to be equal to the C frame dot new using the position that we've supplied, which contains the X and the Z offsets. We're going to transform that by the Y offset. And then finally, we're going to rotate it by that random angle. Once we've done all of this, we'll move our new decor, pivot to that C frame we've just created. And finally, we will parent it to whatever parent we're given to the function. So now we can call this, we'll say spawn track decoration. We want cactus because that's the name of the thing. And then the position, well, that's this value right here. And finally the parent, well, that's this folder. So if we now play the game, we should hopefully see, oh, hang on a minute. No, we don't, we have an error. Uh, invalid argument number two to random. Uh, so current land is causing an issue. Oh, we, we're taking the whole size. We only want the size dot x. There we go. And now we're going no such asset cactus. So that, like I say, we've got to check. And yet we're trying to find it in the assets folder. It's in the, the sub decoration folder. Fix that up and we should see, yep, yeah, we've got some cactus. Now they're only spawning on the one side of the track. So if we want to spawn them on both sides, then we're going to need to create a loop within the loop. So we're already looping through for how many times you want to do it. And you could even make this a, a little variable like density, make this five or whatever number you want and swap that in there. So let's make a loop for i, x, direction in. I'm going to provide a table of two values, one and minus one. I'm going to use these to go on both sides for our x offset. So let's move all of this inside of this loop. And now when we calculate the x offset at the very end, actually first let's wrap all of these in brackets. So we've got a bracket at the start and at the end. Then we can multiply that whole thing by the x direction. 
like so. And now we should see we have cactuses generating on both sides. Pretty cool, and they're all sorts of angles as well. Now, we probably don't want to just have cactuses, so we could add a bit of uh, randomization logic. I could say if math.random between 1 and 5, if that equals 1, so a 20% chance, then we will generate a cactus. Uh, else, if a new random, 1, 5, equals, equals 2, uh, then we'll spawn in not a cactus, but the rock. So that's actually not going to be another 20%. That's, well, someone else can work out the the, uh, the exact probability. But if we run that now, we should see some rocks and we should see some cactus. And if I get in my train and I start moving along, I might want to upgrade the speed of this, to be honest. Only at 32 studs per second isn't that quick. But as we generate forwards, we should get some new stuff start to spawn in. And it's pretty cool. We need to um, remove the environment behind us, though, from our environment cleanup function. But that's looking pretty neat, isn't it? I might even upgrade the density so we can get it a little bit more. Let's try um, a density of 8. And doing the cleanup's pretty easy because we've already created this folder with the name. We can just look for that. Uh, inside of our cleanup. So the old decor is just workspace.environment and we look to see if there's any folder named environment underscore dot dot and we're just going to need a track number. So when we do the, the cleanup from our track function, uh, let's just send the current number along with it minus the track buffer because that's the number that we remove, the old track that we're moving. So we can use that here, track number, and add it on to this search. So environment track number. And if we have old decor, then let's destroy it. And I'm also going to make my train go a little bit faster. Well, let's upgrade to 64 studs a second. Jump in my train and we start moving along. And hopefully we should see stuff start to disappear behind us. We've got a little bit more density of assets, which I like. And there we go. Things are starting to spawn in and out. And that's looking pretty cool, isn't it? So I think that's everything for today's video. Hopefully you found that helpful. You've got now your generating terrain for your game. You probably want to have it um, run on with a bit of a larger buffer than this, but I've set it low so that you can see what's happening nice and easy. But thank you very much for watching, everyone. If you do want to get all the scripts and project files for this, they will be available at gnomecave.com slash academy for the academy members as usual. But until next time, I will see you in the next episode. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.